So here's some more examples of uh, completing the square. And these are some more, again, complicated problems that are probably more suited, more suited for the quadratic formula than completing the square, but we'll forge through this. So again, uh, this time I'll just uh, add the 4 to both sides. Uh, in my first steps, so I got 3x squared minus 2x equals 4. And then I'll divide everything by 3 because we want to have a 1 in front of the x squared. And now we've got x squared minus 2 thirds x. That equals 4 thirds. And then again, the square root of x squared is x. So these are my little numbers. This goes up here. I need half of 2 thirds, so I could take 1 half times 2 thirds. And that just ends up being 1 third. That's my little number there. And you can see 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds, so that makes sense. And then I'm going to add this squared. 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 3 is 9, so that's going to be, or 1 third times 1 third is 1 ninth. And that's what I'm going to add to both sides. Now I know, again, this is going to be in the form of a trinomial square, so this is going to be the sine. So it's going to be x minus 1 third. And I can add these up over here. 4 thirds is the same thing if I multiply the top and the bottom by 3. 12 over 9 plus 1 over 9 is 13 over 9. So I could write that as 13 ninths. And I know if x minus 1 third squared equals 13 ninths, I know that x minus 1 third equals plus or minus the square root of 13 over 9, which is the same thing as plus or minus the square root of 13 over the square root of 9, which is plus or minus the square root of 13 all over 3. So if I add 1 third to both sides, I know that x equals 1 third plus or minus the square root of 13 all over 3. And I could put those over a common denominator of 3, so I could write 1 plus or minus the square root of 13 all over 3. So I think that makes sense. And again, if this is too small, you can always pause it and zoom in to see what's going on up here. Okay, and then number, example number 12, we've got a negative sign here. Uh, so I need to take care of that first so I can divide everything by a negative. So I can rewrite this as 2x squared minus 3x minus 7 equals 0 divided by minus 1 is 0. That's one way to do it. Or you could combine it with another step. But this seems a little bit easier to me to I kind of isolate this. And then we'll just isolate our x squared and x terms like we did before. So we've got 2x squared minus 3x equals 7. I add 7 to both sides. Then I'll get rid of this coefficient of the x squared. We don't want that. We want that to be 1. So divide everything by 2. So now we have x squared minus 3 halves x equals 7 over 2 and the square root of x squared is x and we need half of 3 halves so 1 half times 3 halves makes 3 fourths so that's going to be 3 fourths and if I square 3 fourths what do I get 9 over 16 3 times 3 is 9 4 times 4 is 16 so or 3 fourths times 3 fourths is 9 over 16 Okay, and we know that this is a nice trinomial square. This is my sine, and these little numbers go in here, x and 3 fourths. And this is a, a common denominator of 16, so if I multiply the top and the bottom by 8, oh my gosh, what's 8 times 7? 56. 
over 16. If I multiply the top and the bottom by 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 8 times 7 is 56, plus 9 over 16. And that's going to be, what, 55 over 16? So I know that this equals 55 over 16. And then I know that if uh, x minus 3 fourths squared equals 55 over 16, I know that x minus 3 fourths equals plus or minus the square root of 55 over 16, which equals plus or minus the square root of 55 all over the square root of 16. And what's the square root of 16? That's just 4. And now I could add 3 fourths to both sides. x equals 3 over 4 plus or minus the square root of 55 all over 4. And again, I've got a common denominator, so I'll just write that as 3 plus or minus the square root of 55 all over 4. And there you go. So I hope this helped.